The next uh, theorem that we want to discuss is called Stokes' theorem. And in preparation for that, we need another form of uh, derivative sort of uh, uh, entity, which is called the curl, and that's what we're going to discuss in this clip. So we've already met, we've already met this uh, Nabla operator, and what this operator does, symbolically, is it, it, it's actually a vector whose components are the derivation with respect to the various um, to the various uh, coordinates x, y, and z, and from this operation, uh, operator we saw we, we saw two variants. So if it operates on a scalar function f, then what we get is a vector, the vector, the derivative of f with respect to x, the derivative of f with respect to y, and the derivative of f with respect to z. So when this Nabla operator acts on a scalar function, we get a vector, and this is what we call the gradient. Then we saw what happens if we take this same operator and act on a vector field. Now f is a vector field with three components, p, q, and r, and the action is kind of like a dot product. So what we get is the dot product of this operator with the vector p, q, r, which are the components of f, and what we get is the derivative of p with respect to x plus the derivative of q with respect to y plus the derivative of r with respect to z. And this is what we called the divergence, and this is what we used uh, in Gauss's theorem. And note that the, the divergence, that this operator acting on a, on a vector field, gives a scalar function. Okay? And the third um, appearance of this operator is, again, acting on a vector field, but this time using the uh, cross product. Okay, so again, this is all abuse of notation, thinking of this as a vector and dotting the two vectors. Okay, you, you see that it's abuse of notation, but it makes sense. So that's why it's denoted like this. And this, this thing is simply the, the, the determinant i, j, k, and then the components of the two vectors. So the component of this vector is d to dx, d to dy, and d to dz. And the components of f are p, q, and r. And this thing is called the curl, the curl of f, or the rotor. These are, these are equivalent names. Both are used. And we'll see why why these names we will only be able to discuss a bit later, after we discuss Stokes' theorem. So this is the, the, the next appearance, the curl, and I want to discuss it a bit. So first of all, let's rewrite it and open up all, all this determinant and see what we get. So the curl of f as we wrote is the vector i, j, k, d to dx, d to dy, d to dz, and then the components of f, p, q, and r. And let's see what we get. So in the i component, in the i component, we're going to have r with respect to y. Let, let me use this notation, which is a bit shorter. r with respect to y minus q with respect to z. So this is the i component, minus, in the j component, minus because of the j component, r with respect to x, minus uh, p with respect to z, plus the k component is qx minus py. Do you agree? Okay, so this is the rotor or the curl of a vector field f. In order to write it and present it like this, we need to assume that f has partial derivatives, right? 
Okay. And what I want to show is several uh, remarks uh, concerning this, um, so let's call them properties, properties of the curl. So by the way, equivalent notation for this, you will see people write uh, this or write this. And they're all, of course, the same. I'm usually going to use this notation because I think it's the most illuminating. So you see this, you know exactly what needs to be done. Okay. So some properties. The first property is linearity. If you take um, the rotor of the sum of two vector fields, or you can throw in a scalar as well, alpha f plus g, what you get is the rotor of the first plus the rotor of the second. So this is property one. I'm using the word properties, but this is a theorem. It requires proof. How would you go along proving such a theorem? Right, you just take the definition of the rotor, call F P Q R, call G P1 Q1 R1, plug in the, the here for, for the rotor of the sum, you would write P plus P1, Q plus Q1, R plus R1, and calculate this. Do the same thing for F and G separately and add them and see that you get both the same thing on both sides, right? So it's a very technical proof. There's no wisdom in it, and I'm not going to do it. It's boring. Okay, but it's good practice if you want to do it. Okay. Okay. Second property. Let's move to a new board. Second property. Oh, let's not move to a new board because then I'm going to have to copy the rotor. Let's write it here. Second property. Um, the divergence. Let's write it like this. The divergence. So the divergence is the nabla operator dot, and now I need to write a field here, right? So the divergence of the field rotor of f, right? The rotor is itself a vector field. It has three components. So what is the divergence of the rotor of a, f of a vector field f? So let's see. What's the divergence? The divergence is taking the first component of this, its derivative with respect to x, plus the second component of this, the derivative with respect to y, plus the third component of this, the derivative with respect to z, right? So I need to take this, the derivative with respect to x, which is 0, here the derivative with respect to y, which is 0, and here the derivative with respect to z, which is 0, add them up, you get 0. Do you agree? Everybody? No. No. Yeah. Here I have ry minus qz. The, def the definition of the, of the divergence of a field, this is now the field I'm operating on, is take the derivative of this with respect to x. It's 0, right? Does everybody agree? Thank you. You just saved the dignity of the entire classroom. Okay, I just lied. Why? I said, okay, ry minus qz, the derivative with respect to x is 0. That's nonsense. Why is it nonsense? Because the derivative of r with respect to y, r is the component, the, the k component of this field f. r can be comprised of x's, y's, and z's, right? r can be, for example, sine xy plus e to the power z divided by arc tan of xyz. Right? Its derivative with respect to y could have x, y's, and z's in it. Right? Derivatives, partial derivatives of functions are again functions of all three variables in general. Do you agree? So it's not true that ry, its derivative with respect to x is zero. It's just not true in general. Do you agree? Everything I said was a lie, a bold lie. Okay? And you all fell for it. But nevertheless, this is true. 
So why is this true? So the proof, the proof is very easy. What we need is to calculate the derivative with respect to x of this thing, which is what? Which is r y x minus q z x. That's the derivative with respect to x of that thing, right? Plus the derivative with respect to y of the j component. So it's plus minus r x y. Let's change this into a minus r x y minus minus plus p z y. Right? And finally, the derivative with respect to z of this, so it's plus q x z minus p y z. Do you agree? And now we have r y x here and r x y here in a minus sign. These two cancel, and likewise all the others. So this equals zero. And that's why this is true, but when can I guarantee that this is in fact zero, that the mixed partials are equal? What was the requirement on the field in order for the mixed partials to be equal? C2. Right, C2. So this theorem is only true for a field F, which is C2. Continuous second partial derivatives, okay? which guarantees that the mixed partial derivatives are equal, and therefore everything here cancels out. Okay? Everybody good? Everybody understand what was the lie previously? Everybody good? Okay. So this is an important property. It's very useful. Um, good to remember. Very easy to prove. Okay, the next property is of a similar nature. So now I'm going to take the rotor of a gradient. So little f is now a scalar function, f of x, y, z, and I'm taking its gradient, which is the vector d to dx, d to dy, d to dz, and I'm finding the rotor of that. And this is also equal zero providing that f is in C2, okay? And it's a very similar exercise. You have to calculate the rotor, do this, and things cancel out, and I'm going to leave it for you to, 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 to check the details, okay? Very similar, same, same idea. Okay, question? Yeah, does it make sense if we said that the two vectors are perpendicular? Like because Which two vectors? Like the gradient and the, the gradient of the where, where do you see the gradient the here? Product is zero, okay? of two vectors. So no, but this is abuse of notation. Zero, okay. okay, it doesn't make sense to say that this vector is perpendicular to this thing because this is not a vector. This is an operator and this is just notation that hints of what we're doing coordinate wise. Okay, if I wrote this, diver okay, I could have written this thing as divergence of curl of f equals zero. Th this is the statement of this, of this theorem, okay? And writing it like this, you shouldn't go beyond the, the, the abuse of notation and t take that any steps further because it, it doesn't make sense, okay? Okay, so just a, a quick uh, comment. I made here a mistake, an unintentional mistake. This is the zero vector, right? The gradient of a function, of a scalar function, is a vector, and the rotor of a vector field is, again, a vector. So this is the zero vector. Okay, clear? One more property, which is, um, uh, we discussed the similar uh, property for the, for the divergence is kind of a product rule. So let's see what shape the product rule takes for the rotor. So if you do the rotor of a product of a scalar function in a vector field, 
So this is a scalar times a vector. So this is again a vector field, and we can ask what is the rotor. And it's again going to be a form of a product rule, just like we have for derivatives in Calc 1. So it's going to be the first, or, or let's write it in the other order, the derivative of the first, so the derivative of a scalar function is the gradient, times the second, untouched, and times is now the, the, the cross product, plus the first untouched times the derivative of the second. And the derivative is now the rotor. So this is the product rule form which goes along with the rotor or the curl. Good. And again, proving something like this would be calculating both sides separ separately according to the definitions and seeing that you get the same thing. Okay, good? Everybody? Questions? Okay, so now that we know the, the um, I want to do an example. Let's do a quick example. Example. Let's take the, the field to be the following field. So it has to have three components, P, Q, and R. So let's take x plus y minus 4. That's the P component. 3xy, that's Q. That's the J component. And 2xz plus z squared, that's the K component. So this is P, this is Q, and this is R. And let's find the curl. So the curl of f equals i, j, k. I always recommend not trying to memorize the components of the curl, but rather remembering what this means. And it's easy to remember if you know the notation, and then just calculating it. Okay, not trying to memorize ry minus qz, qz and then rx minus pz in minus, and that, that's not a wise approach. So the components of the curl, d to dx, d to dy, d to dz, and then the components of f. So x plus y minus 4, 3xy, and 2xz plus z squared. And now I just have to calculate it. So in the i component, I'm going to get the derivative, the derivative with respect to y of this. And this is y-less. OK, so the derivative here is honestly 0, minus the derivative with respect to z of 3xy, which is again 0. So now I'm not cheating. This is the i component. The j component is the derivative with respect to x of 2xz plus z squared, which is 2z minus the derivative with respect to z of x plus y plus a minus 4, which is 0. But I need a minus sign because it's the j component. Good, everybody with me? And now the k component is the derivative with respect to x of this, which is 3y, uh, minus the derivative with respect to y of this, which is 1. So this would be the curl of this vector field. And again, it has three components, and each component is, again, a function of x, y, and z. Very simple in this example, but um, is, is the idea clear? Okay. Any questions about the curl? No, the, the one thing we didn't do is give the physical interpretation of the curl. What is the curl measuring? That we're going to do after we discuss Stokes' theorem. Questions? Okay, so coming up next, Stokes' theorem.